Okay, so we're gonna fill in the chart and knowing that all these uh, compounds that we're gonna form are ionic. And the reason why we know they're ionic, it's because all of them are formed by a metal. Okay, so this, 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 all of these are metals and a metal plus a non-metal, it's always an ionic compound. Okay, so ionic compounds always, remember, metal plus non-metal. So if we see that we have a metal at the beginning, and then we see that we have a non-metal afterwards, that's going to be an ionic compound. So in order to form the ionic compound, we need to know first the ions that each of the elements form. And then when we know the ions, we put them together and then we can name them. So the second example is fluorine with potassium. Fluorine, it's in group 17. So the charter that it will always have is fluorine one minus, okay? And potassium is in group one. So the charter that it will always have will be potassium one plus. If we have to put the chemical formula together, remember that the ion that is the positive ion, the metal always goes first. So that's why we write the potassium and then the non-metal, it's going to go after. And then the final thing that we're going to do is we're going to do the crisscross rule. So the charge of the metal goes to the non-metal and the charge of the non-metal goes to the metal. So this one goes here and this one goes here. So therefore one and one, that's the formula. How do we call this? Because this is a type one ionic compound that's going to be potassium fluoride. Okay. All right. The next one is pretty similar. Sodium is in group one. So sodium is sodium plus and fluorine is fluorine minus. Would you say that, right? So we put the metal first, sodium first and fluorine after and then crisscross rule one and one. So we don't do anything. So this is going to be sodium, sodium fluoride. For the next one, we have sodium again. So sodium plus and then phosphate okay or um phosphorus not phosphate sorry phosphorus is gonna be coming to phosphide okay and the phosphide is always 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 p3 minus because it's of its location in the periodic table okay we put them together and this is gonna be sodium and then the phosphorus there and then we have to crisscross so the three of the phosphorus is gonna go down here so we put a three there and the name of this is going to be sodium sodium phosphide and then we have magnesium which is magnesium 2 plus because it's on the second period and oxygen is always o2 minus because it's on the 16th period okay so magnesium and oxygen they go together mgo and then we do two and two so two and two but remember we can cancel this because we can simplify them so it would be mgo so this is going to be magnesium magnesium oxide okay so now we are given the name of the compound and we have to find the formula so zinc remember is one of the exceptions for type 1 so zinc which is the n it's the exceptions one of the exceptions for type 1 so zinc has always a charge always of 2 plus and then chloride comes from chlorine and chlorine always forms a charge of Cl minus. So if we put them together, we're gonna put the metal first, then the non-metal, and then we do the crisscross rule. So these two of the zinc, it's going to be down here. The last two are type two because we have the Roman numerals. So copper, it's a metal, and because it has a two here, the charge of the copper is going to be copper two plus. Always the Roman numeral gives you the positive charge of the metal. And then chloride comes from chlorine, and chlorine always forms chlorine minus. So this is going to be Cu, Cl, and then remember to crisscross, 2. And then finally, we have iron, which has a charge of plus 3 because of the Roman numeral. So this is going to be iron, and then iron is going to be forming iron 3 plus. And then we have the oxide that comes from the oxygen. When it becomes an anion, it's going to be O2 minus. So if we put these two together, this is going to be FeO, and then we crisscross, so the two of the oxygen goes to the iron, and the three of the iron goes to the oxygen, and that would be it. This last activity, it's a mixture of everything, which is what you would find in an assessment. All right, so they're giving you the names here of the compounds, and you need to know whether they're ionic or covalent, and then you need to write the chemical formula. So 
The first thing that you need to take into consideration is whether you have a metal plus a non-metal or two non-metals. Because if you have a metal plus a non-metal or a metal plus a polyatomic ion, that's ionic. So let's fi figure out which ones are first ionic, okay? So barium chloride. Barium, it's a metal, so that's going to be ionic, okay? Potassium sulfide, that's going to be ionic because potassium is a metal. Potassium dichromate, same thing. It's going to be a ionic compound because, because potassium is a, it's a metal. Carbon tetrahydride, it's going to be covalent because carbon in the hydride comes from the hydrogen. Both are non-metals. Iron oxide, because iron is a metal, that's going to be ionic. Sulfur dioxide, both are non-metals, so that's going to be covalent. Carbon monoxide, that's going to be covalent, two non-metals. Xenon tetrafluoride, that's going to be covalent, because that's two non-metals. And sodium hydroxide, that's going to be ionic, because sodium is a metal. So this is the first classification that you need to do, because based on whether you have an ionic or a covalent compound, the way you name and the way you write the formula is a little different, okay? All right, so now, barium chloride, potassium sulfide, and potassium dichromide. Barium, potassium, and potassium, like those three uh, first examples, all of them are type one because the metals only have one cation, okay? Type one. That's important to know as well. Also, iron oxide, it's type two, type two, because you see the Roman numeral and that tells you that iron has more than one cation possible. And then sodium hydroxide, because it, it, it's sodium, it's gonna be type one. Because all the group one and group two metals are type one and then aluminum, zinc and silver. Okay, all right, so now that we know what type of a ionic compounds we have and which ones are covalent compounds, then we can start writing the formulas. So to write the chemical formula, you need to do a little bit of work, actually. Okay, so the work, I'm going to show you the work on the side. I'm going to erase this type 1 and type 2 part. And I'm going to show you the work on the side because that's important to understand what you need to do in order to get to the answer. Barium chloride. So barium, if you go to the periodic table, it's a it's in group two, so it forms barium two plus, and then chlorine, because it's in the group seventeen, forms chlorine minus. This is important because when you have to put them together, you need to do the crisscross rule. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I put the barium first, metal first, then the chlorine, and then I do the crisscross rule. So because this barium has a two here, that goes to the other side. So it's BCl BaCl two, potassium sulfide. Same thing. So potassium is in group one. It forms a cation that is plus one, always. And then sulfide comes from sulfur. So sulfur always forms S2 minus. Okay, so when you put them together for the chemical formula, you put the potassium first, then the sulfur, and then you do the crisscross rule. So that's why the two of the sulfur goes to the potassium. So I wrote it, write the two there. Now, next one potassium dichromate. If it ends in eight, that's going to be a polyatomic ion, okay? So check the polyatomic ion. What is it, that polyatomic ion? I'm gonna write it right now. For potassium, potassium we know that is K plus again, and the dichromate is gonna be Cr2O7 with an overall charge of negative two, okay? That is the dichromate. So you put them together, you put the potassium first, then you put the dichromate, Cr2O7, Okay, and then the two of the polyatomic ion goes to the potassium. So I write it two there. Next one, carbon tetrahydride. It's a covalent compound. So the way we write the formula is just by reading what the name says. It says carbon, so I write carbon. And then tetra, that prefix stands for four. So tetrahydride, it's going to be four hydrogens. So H4. Iron two oxide, that's ionic, we said type two, right? So these two that you see here, that is the charge of the iron. So that's going to be Fe two plus, I'm doing the work here. And then the oxide is always O2 minus. Okay, so you put them together and that's going to be the iron first, then the oxygen, and then because both of them are two and two, you can write two and two and then simplify. So FeO. That's the answer. 
Sulfur dioxide, it's covalent, so just write what you read. So sulfur dioxide, died means two, oxide means oxygen, so two oxygens. The prefix is the number of the element, okay? The number that tells you how much or how many of these element you have. Carbon monoxide, so one carbon, one oxygen, because mono stands for one. Xenon tetrafluoride, so xenon, and then tetra means four. Fluoride comes from fluorine, so it's going to be F4. And finally, sodium hydroxide, careful with this one. The hydroxide is a polyatomic ion, so check it out. It's OH negative, okay? So here you have sodium, that is always sodium plus, one plus, and then hydroxide, it's always like this. It's a polyatomic ion, check it out, okay? You put the sodium first, then the OH, and because both of them have a charge of one, they cancel each other out, that would be the answer.